Hey y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. Okay, so if you go back and watch the first video concerning the 18 day compost, we showed you how to set it up, we made the cage. Go back, I'm not sure what shoulder I'm supposed to point at, but over one of these shoulders, you're gonna see a link. This shoulder, you're gonna see a link taking you back to how we set this up. And folks, think about it. If you just kind of follow along and do the paint by numbers, you should have a relatively successful outcome. That's why we're doing this more in a vlog style format. Okay, that said, here we are. We put this thing together, got it wet, really wet, let it marinate for four days. Now here is the beginning of day five. It's Sunday, it's before church, and um, we're gonna get this done beforehand. So what it's gonna entail, you're not, let me just back up and say, you're not gonna see the most massive transformation according to our experience until about the fourth flip. So you're gonna see the stuff, the green is gonna be wilted, and I haven't even looked at this yet, so I, can't, I don't even know for sure, but in the past, the green is wilted, it's a little bit intermixed, but you're not gonna see the massive transformation yet. But we're gonna flip this pile, and as we do it, we're gonna show you how we do it. Here we go, just because somebody's gonna ask, it's really not that important to us, but we got this handy dandy compost thermometer, and we'll try it a couple of ways. I'll just stick it down through the middle of here. This is your microbial activity going to work. All right, y'all, it was right about 140, which is okay, that's completely fine, but check it out. When you do your flips is where you need to make adjustments. In fact, we never used this. The only reason we did is just because we were almost certain somebody would ask. So now, all it comes to at this point, like I said, you don't see much in terms of uh, transformation. No, not yet. You'll see it in the center, but now we're gonna flip it. And by the fourth time, by the fourth flip, that's by our experience when you're gonna see the most massive transformation. But we'll get this cage off, commence to flipping. All right, here we are, the cage is off. Doesn't smell awful, so it's not anaerobic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over. Now there's a lot of debate on how you should go about doing this. Like you should take the outside, put it on the inside, so on and so forth, and take the stuff that's in the middle and put it on the outside. From our experience, that's not entirely necessary you wanna to try to do it to a certain extent. You wanna to try to get the outside in there first, but you don't need to take a whole lot of effort into trying to get it perfectly, like take all the outside off and go back. Cause by the second flip, remember this is the first flip after making a pile, by the second flip, this stuff will be almost completely integrated. But you do wanna try as best you can to try to take the outside and put it down in the middle as best you can. But like I said, as you see this process unfold, you're gonna find out that it's not as religious in terms of doing that than a lot of folks say that it is. So we're gonna get on to it right now. All right, so every once in a while in your pile, you wanna stab your pitchfork in the middle and then pry out while you're flipping it. And that just helps create a better base in your pile so that way it doesn't fall over, or get too funky shaped. All right, first flip is complete. And as you can see, it's largely integrated. We did spend a little bit of time trying to get what we could, but we weren't overly religious about it. Now, your benchmarks at this point, obviously you can see me, I'm 5'10", and you can kind of get a sense of scale based to me. So it's almost in like a pyramid type structure. 
Now, the last thing to do before we cover it back up with a tarp, we're gonna kick in the sides. Now, you could use a hard rake and try to shove it in there, but we're gonna go ahead and kick in the sides, almost like doing a Mexican hat dance around here as somebody explained to us, uh, used before. Now, son, what's the purpose of doing it this way? This just makes sure that all the compost is in one pile. If you have a bunch of straggly stuff out on the edges, it's not really decomposing or adding to the pile much at all. So if this, if you got weak knees or, you know, your legs ain't working, you could take a rake. This ain't a rake. If your legs ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If your legs ain't working. Maybe this ain't the kind of pile for you. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you could take a flat, hard rake and shove in the sides like so. But we're quite able-bodied, so we're just gonna go ahead, commence to kick this thing in the side, and it's gonna heat, it's gonna help it to heat more uniformly. So you can't really see it up close and personal, but there is a transformation. You can feel it in the heat. The green stuff has started to wilt. And as, we, as this process unfolds, you can see it right now, it just looks like a pile. Here before long, it will make that transition, usually about the fourth flip. And the only issue that would be, you know, prevalent right now during this whole process is if uh, your temperature wasn't high enough. If it didn't raise up in temperature at all, you didn't do anything really. Like the compost wasn't made, something very important was missing in your compost. Either it wasn't big enough or you didn't have any nitrogen or it was just all straight carbon or it was completely dry something like that but that's the only troubleshooting thing you're going to be able to do at this first flip and remember in that first video go back if this is the first time you're seeing this it is critical that you watch and see how the components were added to this pile so go back and watch that first video because it's important we had so many questions and so many people that were having problems because we didn't really convey it as well the first time out so we're going to continue to do this in the vlog and we hope you stick along so now we're gonna cover this up and then it's a waiting game. The most common problem is that it's not big enough. That's 90% of the time, that's the most common problem. Whatever you think is big enough, double it. In this particular case, it's about a yard and a half, somewhere thereabout. All right, the tarp is on there now to help manage the moisture content. So if it rains, if it's an open pile, if it rains, it's not gonna to add too much moisture. Remember, from the very beget, from the very get go, we added all the moisture we would like to see in this pile. So that tarp helps to manage it and maintain some of the heat. Now around the end, ordinarily I'd take some tent spikes and put it around there, but this ground is um, it's in progress, and there's a whole layer of gravel that was put down here before, so the spikes don't work so well. So we just put deadfall and stuff like that that's going to help keep this tarp in place. Now. This is a stark contrast to what you're going to see in the chicken tractor on steroids. So stay tuned for that. The whole process and how we go about it is, is completely different, but it still gets you to the same end. That's a whole nother story. So watch that along with this, see which one works best for you. So folks, there we have it. We're going to let it sit today. It'll sit tomorrow, the rest of today, all of tomorrow. Then the following day, get on to the next flip. So, Hopefully that helps. Follow along, paint by the numbers as we're doing it here, folks. Don't do too many deviations when you're first learning this. Just follow the steps. Till next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.